Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today I'm going to show you how to do this using M Tracker 3D, M Puppet, maybe a little M Roto AI. This is me when I could skateboard <laughs> about 10 years ago. Just kidding, it was like 10 seconds ago. Either way, on to the tutorial. It's pretty cool. So the first thing you need to do is prep your photograph. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm just going to select me as a subject and draw a rectangle and then do generative fill to fill in those gaps. What we're doing is creating a foreground and a background image. And then we also took a shot of the skateboard so that we could isolate the skateboard as well. Once we were able to separate our skateboard foreground and background, we simply exported each of those images out as a separate PNG so that we could bring those into Final Cut Pro and start to use those inside of MTracker 3D. We made sure that our starting frame in our video was going to be really close to the frame of the photograph that we are using to track in. We then brought that photograph in above that first video clip and we resized it to make sure that it matches as closely as possible so that we can achieve this effect. Next, we bring in our foreground image so that we can, again, make sure that that sizing and look is going to be similar to the video. And finally, bring in our skateboard. And we just want to work on that to make sure our composition looks accurate and is ready for tracking. Now that we know our composition is going to be in good shape, we can apply M Tracker 3D and click track to track our footage. Next, we will click copy track and then we can go over and find our M Tracker 3D drop zone and apply that title in above our footage. We can then click paste track and we can select our position and then by holding shift down, we can straighten the orientation of our gizmo so that we know that it is pointing directly straight up. We can make adjustments to the scale of the drop zone so that we can set our background first. So the next thing I need to do is populate my drop zone with our background image. Now I've already made this background image in black and white just because I wanted it to have a little bit of a different look. So we will apply clip and then you can see here that that is tracked in really, really well. So looking pretty good. Next, I want to add my foreground. So option, click and drag up. And we are going to add our foreground. But before we do that, we actually need to do a little bit of M Puppet. So let's go into our generators. We will find M Puppet. Let's go ahead and drag that in. And I'm going to drag this in above our drop zones there just so that we can make sure that that is timed out properly there we go and then i can bring it back in over here just so we can work on it we need to put our image into m puppet now something that i did notice is that my foreground image is actually a super high resolution it's about 9k in resolution but there is a way to essentially trick M Puppet into working since we are in a 4K timeline. So I'm going to option G, I'm going to create a compound clip of that image. And now M Puppet will take that image in the drop zone, no problem. So we can apply the clip. And let's go ahead and add some handles by clicking on me. I'm going to maybe add a few to, I can add one to my knee, one to my foot, maybe one to the center here, one to my hand, and maybe one to my elbow. I'm going to go into my mesh group and then in handles, we're going to just click add keyframes and this should add keyframes to all of my handles. And I'm just going to push down until about the end of that clip and we can just add some kind of kicking motion or something like that. Maybe my hand is flying up. I'm moving forward. Maybe not that, maybe not that aggressively, but you know, just kind of move it around so that it looks like I'm kind of doing a little bit of kicking action, kicking motion. So there we go. So that's kind of the move. 
actually I think that my hand is doing a little bit too much and this part's doing a little bit too much so something like that there we go that looks pretty good so I'm kind of kicking down awesome that looks great I'm going to make M Puppet a compound clip as well so that we can apply it to our M Tracker 3D drop zone and it will play back as a video. So option G, go ahead and do that. And then let's come back to our drop zone here. That is our original image, so turn that off. And we are going to apply our M Puppet. Click apply clip and then you should see that that is moving. I know it's hard to see because it's tracked in. But that is moving. So here's where the fun magic starts to happen. Because obviously these are on the same plane in three-dimensional space. And we want to make me look like I'm kind of popping out of that image. So on this second drop zone here that has our foreground, we are going to come to our drop zone position. And we're going to push that out on Z space. And then we can, of course, bring that down on Y so that we can see it. And so we're out by 2.2 pixels. And you can see that there is some of that happening. Now, obviously, I start to shrink and things start to happen as we get down. That's okay. We're going to address that here in just a second. But for now, we're just kind of setting up our composition. So that looks pretty good. I might want to come out on Z a little bit more. So let's just say 2.5. That looks good. We can bring me down on Y just a bit. And that looks pretty awesome. So I want you to notice that as we push down, because I'm in 2D, I become flat. And we don't really want that to happen. So we're going to add another keyframe on our rotation. Because you can see currently it's on zero. But then as we push forward, so that I don't look like I'm just getting completely flat, we can add that rotation here. And then you can see that I've kind of kicked out and now I'm not flat. Of course, now we introduce some issues with our lighting. So let's go ahead and just boost our ambient light up so that now we've got that light and we should be in pretty good shape. All right, I'm a little too bright here. So bring down our light intensity overall so that the ambient light is the only thing affecting us. And there we go. So now I'm rotating out so that I don't completely turn flat and invisible there. Now the next thing we do is we duplicate this as well. Option click and drag up. And we are going to now add our skateboard. And the good thing is, is these keyframes are going to already be applied to our board. So we'll click apply clip. And obviously that is not the proper position, but it is going to rotate as well so it doesn't become flat because we've already added that rotation. And now all we need to do is use our position on our content here to bring that skateboard down, bring it over and make it look like I'm doing some kind of awesome crazy trick. And we just kind of play with it until we get it in that position that we want that to be in. So one more thing that I'm noticing is I kind of want this edge on my background to actually match up with my concrete. So I'm going to turn on my background image and just do a very quick crop to crop that bottom bit out just like this. Click done, we'll turn that back off. And then I'm just going to reapply that background drop zone. And there we have it. Now we have something a little bit cleaner on that edge and that just looks a little bit more like that photograph is just kind of sticking and floating in place right there and that's about it from me we actually did not have to use mroto ai in this tutorial we were able to achieve this look using m tracker 3d and m puppet only along with a little bit of photoshop just to clean up those backgrounds if you have any questions or comments definitely be sure to drop a comment below we would love to communicate with you on any of those ideas or questions that you may have be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one